it was already hitting the fiberglass shell, putting a lot of pressure and it was already introducing some cracks into where the shell sits right here. That was just pointing way, way up. By the time you hitch it on, this part would be very close to the ground. That's it being straight. And look how high it is up here. Instead of two by three, I'm gonna put in two by four. That'll give it a little bit more structural strength. It looks like it was almost meant to almost take a two by four. I already measured this and it's perfect for a two by four. But I think this is all factory. I don't think this is a replacement. I think this is the original. So I just cut this piece. I'm just gonna cut all that right here. Here's a close up of the front cross member. Just so we can appreciate how rusty it is. And the rear cross member as well. And I think the previous owner tried to remove the gray water tank by torching off the cross member. That's why the cracks actually appear to be melted. Here I am using a 60 grip flap disc with a polisher machine. The whole point is just to get it to a good surface so that it can accept the rest reformer that we're going to be applying on top of it. And it goes by pretty quick, it doesn't take too much time. You just got to make sure you wear a mask. As soon as we use the flap disc, we use mineral spurs to clean and then the rust reformer. It's coming along. We already have, and you're looking at it upside down, but we already welded in the C channels right here. Here, there, and there. It's gonna make the flooring a little bit more sturdier. And these cross members are now nice and strong. I just gotta finish up welding this piece right. After you, you know, taken off all the rust with the flap disc, and then you clean it off, and then apply this. This is like a really good primer, and then just it's almost like a phosphate finish. And then you you finish it off with one of these. It goes on really thick because it's brush on versus using the uh, spray can. Then it kind of self levels a little bit. Works better in when the metal and the paint's a little warm. Now we get to focus on the axles. I'm going to be changing the bearings 
and making sure the electric brakes work. These wires, if I remember correctly, two or three of them were exposed already. So we're going to replace those at a later time. Here's my dad. He's going to be helping us with the axles. The spindles themselves are worn and will require replacing the whole entire axle. But he's going to show us a way to get a little bit more life out of them. Essentially, using a punch you create little craters. And that in turn will make it so that the inner race of the bearing will have something to hold on to. He's an expert in this field, and so it's cool to see something like this being done. Bronze bushings. There's the uh, part number. This is where you pump up the grease, and then it comes out through that little hole. I already saved the angle. I'm gonna line this up. Now I'm gonna do it to the other side. Cut it straight across now. Damn, that's good right there. So nice. It has to be aligned this way and this way. It has to be aligned from being one side tucked in and the other one out and up and down. I lay it, I'm laying it over the top, but that's just so I can get a good a visual of what we're gonna have to cut. And that is up to this surface, 66 and a half. The other one's 66 and a half. a different length than over there so we couldn't use it. Got this piece of wood, got the bolts in there. I'm gonna get a look like probably like cardboard and capture these angles and the distance of we got this template right here. Good thing I made this because it actually did help us. There you go, fit it into the original holes for the frame. This is the actual opening in the fiberglass shell since it kind of, it's like a socket fits into between here. 
So we have to make sure that at least it falls in, which it does. It's really tricky to play around with this and make it fit because the original holes were not the same distance away from the rails. This side was four inches, that side was three and a half inches. So technically this was actually pulling, not indirectly in the center. It's kind of offset a little bit. Which is why it's tricky because then we have a big old gap here and a more tighter one up there. squished this in so now this one's closer this is the original piece and then we're gonna add this one right here as well and that would make sure that it's it's never gonna bend like how we, how we did before the two by four alone would probably be enough but then again we are using the same gauge so by adding this one we'll, we'll stiffen this up is real solid. Covered those gaps that were right here. C channel. Well, then this one as well. This one's diagonal because of the uh, gray water tank and the pipe that goes over there. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be so sick. It's looking brand new now. I'm just super excited. It just looks so good. So now we're just gonna flip it and finish painting the top side of it and start putting everything back together. So the cool thing about the Demco coupler is the easy latch mechanism. They essentially auto latch onto the ball. And they have another model that has about two inches more reach in the front. We try to get our hands on it, but they have it in stock for another two months. Locking. So we might decide to switch it out later. But we'll Locking see. Locking nuts right there.
that's just directly inside of it. Right there. I can torque them down really tight and they're nice and rigid. Super nice. We had to cut off the bolt right here so that the jack can actually slide through the opening hole. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yep. Well, it's the last one. This is so strange. Look at this. I find that kind of strange because this looks original but then it's peeling off right here and it makes me think that that it's painted because go underneath looks really shiny you see that but this layer looks like it's part of it looks like it came from the factory So it makes me think that it's been painted and then underneath we can get to the to the gel coat. It's pretty thick. And then look, this is what we're gonna be fixing. That's pretty bad. This is because of the the frame as I was mentioning was being pushed up against this. This is the worst side. The other side's not that bad, it's just right there on the left corner. But this one got it pretty bad. Yeah, but that just makes me think, like... <laughs> is this the original? Has it all been painted from the factory? Does the gel coat come off in a layer like that? I don't know. Gonna have to wait and see and buff it out. <laughs> 